से भी कम हो गया है Hello and welcome to Hot Money on Bloomberg Quint Live, India's first digital live streaming business news service. This is the show which gives you a complete wrap of all the stocks that are buzzing in trade. I'm Darshan Mehta. First, let's welcome our experts, independent advisor Sharmila Joshi, Vinita Sharma of Narnolia Financial, and Avinash Gurukshaker of Joint Rec Capital Services, join me on the show. Thank you to all of my guests for joining me today on Hot Money. We'll discuss the Z stock of Z Entertainment had fallen significantly, is up almost 12% in today's trade. Maruti fell in 8% post the weak set of numbers. Will the trend continue? Ultratech, despite a decent set of numbers, has been falling given the fact that the commentary was extremely weak. And M&M Financial reported their numbers on Friday after market hours. Is there more traction on the downside, or will you buy this com company? Is something that we'll ask our guests. But let's start with the first one, and that is Z Entertainment. Fell in almost. 30% on Friday today has managed to recover it's up almost 10% but uh, is it is it a time that you should accumulate the stock uh, you've seen the cases like yes bank which have risen significantly from the lows or the jet airways but is z entertainment one of the stocks so we we'll last guess avinash should will you buy z at this level or uh, will you be cautious no i think darshan uh, i would definitely buy it you know if i uh, were to look at a time period of at least 18 to 24 months because our sense is you know the business uh, growth is quite strong Uh, the company has a very strong uh, you know product bouquet and i don't think that you know apart from the promoter pledging uh, the business it in itself is actually uh, you know showing some signs of weakness so i would believe that you know the weakness should be used to actually take a longer term call in the short term you know the stock may remain volatile may remain weak considering that you know that uh, promoter pledging is going to be an overhang on the stock but once the <coughs> strategic sale happens uh, darshan i would believe that the market should definitely look at it positively and you know the management has also clarified that they have got an arrangement with the lender so i think clearly the kind of panic we saw last week uh, i don't think Think, you know, it's going to be repeated at least in the near term. Uh, you think now Z is on the back foot, given the fact that uh, now it's come to the forefront that uh, you know uh, the strategic sale is mainly on account to pay debt in some of the infra companies. Now they are finally admitting it. Uh, what was already been said about, and now since the prices is much low, they will lose the bargaining power to get a decent price for shareholders if they sell the stake. I think that definitely is there. Whenever a seller, you know, sells in these kind of situations, Darshan, the buyer definitely has a premium and a kind of a dominance. So I would believe that, you know, the kind of mistakes uh, the group did in investing in most of the infra investments, I think is definitely going to hurt on the valuations because obviously uh, the valuation will be done at an extremely attractive level to the buyer. And I think to that extent, the Z management has obviously understood this. But net net, I think they would be definitely be trying to take out as much value as possible, you know, from the stakes. Okay what about you Sharmila what's your view on Z now, now that everything is out in the open yes, uh, it's fallen significantly it's recovered uh, what what should one do if if someone is now taking a fresh perspective at Z what should he do I think wait a bit okay. I wouldn't buy immediately uh, definitely I think hmm. I completely agree with the point that fears are now allayed hmm. you know in the sense that uh, I think the management has worked really hard uh, hmm. over the weekend to uh, really have a signed hmm. you know document in place it's not just something that uh, the lenders have said they've signed on the dotted line so to speak hmm. and said that they'll hmm. give them that time i think the two issues that would prevent me from buying it at this point in time is what uh, one thing that you alluded hmm. to uh, that you know they've said that uh, that they still have the bargaining power hmm. so to speak with the strategic buyer that i don't know hmm. because you know it obviously seems to suggest hmm. this development that they would be on the back foot so i would wait for that to happen and at what price it happens so they have that time i'm i'm sure they must be pretty close to uh, doing the deal otherwise you know i don't think the lenders would have uh, you know so quickly signed on the line but uh, yes i would wait to see what uh, price it gets done at and i think they would be on the back foot i think the second thing is that obviously there were huge shorts in the system hmm. and some of them are now getting covered okay so i would wait for that situation also to sort of uh, stabilize before uh, you know you think of uh, hmm. buying the stock but yes i agree in that sense uh, with avinash that you know now fears are allayed and definitely z entertainment seems to be on a stronger footing than some of the other group companies like a dish tv or whatever so uh, i think that it is now coming to valuations that make it attractive okay vinita what have you advised your clients obviously a lot of queries must have come through post this drop and and the big move today uh, what as a research house what have you all told them 
So, uh, you know, uh, purely from model point of view, uh, tracking this company has become a little difficult mm. as to how the strategic partners yeah. will come in and uh, what will be what will be their strategy, you know, as to merger, demerger of various mm. companies that are maybe Z5, they wish to mm. demerge into a separate company. So, it will be a little difficult to analyze mm. from model point of view. Otherwise, if we just look at uh, Z, I think uh, the overall business structure, uh, mm. the kind of brand presence it has, the kind of, you know, it has some 4200 movie titles, some 2 lakh, um, uh, 2 lakh 50 thousand hours of television uh, mm. uh, content that they have. So I think uh, purely from content point of view, the brand presence, the customers all the uh, are, you know, well connected to Z. Mm. So from that point of view, I don't see any uh, problem in the operational business. Definitely the promoters have invested uh, into some areas which has not panned out well mm. and that's the reason for them to, you know, sell the st uh, stake and get out of it. So I think anybody who wants to take a, a long term view and who can, uh, mm. you know, sail through the volatility in the stock prices which will come, they should get some value in Z, uh, the kind of valuation it has come out uh, now. Have you, have you think, revised uh, your targets on Z? So right now we have not been able to come out with a report till some uh, clarity mm. emerges but otherwise we have been positive on Z and we had a target of 460 or uh, rupees earlier. Okay, so that's the view that's coming in on Z. I think the consensus view we are getting it at least in the short term. There will be volatility, but uh, for a long term perspective, yes, uh, uh, it's a portfolio stock that you should accumulate uh, over the next 18 to 24 months. So that's the first stock Z. The other one is very interesting, and that's Maruti Suzuki. Uh, at at 10,000, everyone wanted to buy, and at now 6,500, no one wants to buy. So what should one do? Have the, have the fundamentals totally changed uh, in uh, Maruti of late? Uh, that's something that we want to ask. Uh, uh, Sharmila is down 30% in the last 12 months from 10,000 now it's almost 6,500. Uh, would you buy at this level? Ha have, have things totally gone wrong? Single digit margins coming in? Uh, have they lost the plot Maruti? So yes, I think the margin picture is certainly uh, not very encouraging. I think the positive over there is that the management had somewhere indicated in their commentary even before the numbers uh, that uh, they are seeing that stress and uh, that uh, this year is hmm. going to be a challenging year. I think the second thing that you need to note is that you know this de the demand seems to be slowing down across the space now. Hmm. So the numbers have been weak for quite some months. I think we mustn't forget the fact that it's coming on a higher base. Mm. But it's been coming on a higher base for quite some time. Yeah. I think which is why market had gotten a little sanguine about it because you know you always expect that uh, uh, higher base to hit autos mm. at some point in time. But it hadn't been happening for the longest time. So they've really had this good run for I think good two three years where mm. month on month month on month numbers look good, margins look good. And now suddenly you yeah. have, you know, in the last four or five months that picture getting disturbed, uh, festival season not being what it should have been, etc. So I think not only Maruti, but I think that this entire space is seeing that correction. And I, to my mind, uh, that pressure is going to continue, which is a little unfortunate for the CVs because I think there the cycle is not disturbed yeah. as much. But because I think, uh, you know, this entire space is yeah. viewed together, uh, reality has come to the sector so valuations will also correct and uh, prices will also what correct. about you do you, you agree that uh, you're, you're, that the sector is now going through pain and this pain uh, isn't going to get up and get uh, get out of uh, the sector very very soon and uh, maruti also probably will actually continue with this pain point or you have a different view so i share the same view uh, the volume growth that we have been mm. seeing in the entire auto space is very sluggish mm. and that's uh, that's the view we have been neutral on the space for quite some time and uh, looking at maruti uh, leave around the uh, brand presence and the way you know they have uh, come out with nexa and uh, the premium brands are still uh, premium brand ca uh, cars are still seeing uh, mm. some amount of growth mm. for maruti but the core uh, volume growth in the lower segment that has not been coming and uh, coupled with uh, the kind of discounts that they have given and I think uh, to boost the volume growth that will continue hmm. for some time which will have an impact on the margins so nine and a half percent kind of margin should be sustainable and uh, little bit of uh, premium uh, you know maybe some improvement little bit here and there maybe hmm. because of the uh, cycle improvement in the raw metal but purely from the realization point of view I don't see uh, margins to take a better uh, picture from here on. Okay. So we have a neutral rating on Maruti as of now and uh, that's that's a view. We will not advise somebody to get into it uh, for some a quarter or two 
no. Okay, uh, what about you, Avinash? What have you advised your clients on Maruti? No, I think, uh, you know, clients who have actually taken positions at higher level darshan, we have told them to hold on because okay. our sense is that, you know, uh, rightly, the next one or two quarters are going to be extremely challenging in terms of margins and volumes. And the management actually mentioned in the conference call that the overall industry would grow by not more than 4.5%. So, clearly, numbers would definitely not increase significantly in the short term. But longer term, our sense is that, you know, the kind of positioning Maruti has got. Uh, I would not be surprised that maybe after one or two quarters, you know, the growth revival could happen. And with the NBFC, you know, uh, issues being resolved, you know, the larger part of the story was that NBFC financing also has taken a hit. So, probably, you know, maybe we could see a little bit of revival from the first quarter of FY20. So, clearly, we have to, uh, told our clients that, you know, probably don't buy fresh, wait for some correction. Because the fourth quarter this time is also going to be pretty weak. In fact, Jan numbers, uh, the management clearly hinted, have shown a, a weakening demand trend. So, we will probably see a four, fourth quarter, which is a weak quarter. And probably at that time, if the stock corrects further, that could be a good time to accumulate. Okay, that's the view that's coming in on Maruti. The next one we want to talk about is Ultratech Cement. And obviously, uh, the numbers were in line with the estimate. I think the market was spooked because of the weak commentary that came in in terms of the outlook as far as realization and utilization. So, when you're, you're in the country's largest cement plant company is saying, you know, there are issues, uh, you know, there is a lot of trouble for the comp for the sector. It's down another 4% today. So, clear amount of weakness. Uh, what did you, uh, Vinita, what did you make of Ultratech's number? Uh, it's more than 10 12 percent right now uh, uh, is it an opportunity to buy or are, are you as cautious on the cem cement sector now post the now post the commentary so post the commentary it's not that we are uh, too cautious on cement now we have revised earlier we were neutral but uh, considering uh, we, we are expecting some demand revival to uh, get in and management has said 9 to 10 percent uh, volume growth demand growth mm. in the industry and uh, realization definitely in the north side uh, they have improved and maybe uh, you know for a quarter or so uh, this will not uh, impact the uh, margins because on the cost side things are uh, getting hmm. better so net net i think there should be some amount of EBITDA margin improvement volume if the kind of volume that is coming in if that stays it will be good amount of profit growth that the company should report considering some of them are uh, at a uh, hmm. quite lower valuation for ultratech as such you know there has been lot of uh, mergers into the company and there uh, you know for such a big uh, you know acquiring jp then century and then binani hmm. so the company it's not easy to for a company to get into all the things uh, you know hmm. lined up in just a quarter or so so maybe that will remain a overhang for hmm. some time but otherwise we we have a buy rating on Ultratech and uh, even ACC, these are the two companies on the cement space we are liking. Okay, Sharmila, what's your view on the cement space uh, post Ultratech? I think the entire cement sector is now looking weak. Uh, uh, is it a time to accumulate Ultratech or are, are you cautious uh, because uh, what the commentary does indicate that there could be more potential downside? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I do like Ultratech at uh, this, I mean, as a within the cement space, but completely, I think, you know, to just uh, uh, take off from uh, what uh, Vinita was saying is that uh, uh, you know I think that uh, the demand picture seems uh, th that's what has spooked the market it is mm. not so much the results per se because the results were okay yes sure you had little pressure on the margins and uh, but that could improve given the fact that uh, their production costs are coming down raw material costs are showing improvement so uh, crude has come down so you know you could see an improvement in margins uh, going ahead uh, but I think uh, that's the whole issue that their commentary said and it showed in their numbers as well that demand is, is still sluggish and uh, largely the demand is coming from the institutional segment hmm. which where you don't get uh, too much hmm. of, uh, you don't get very high margins. So, you know, the demand has come from there and you are not seeing a recovery of that. And my guess is that till the elections are out of the way, you are not likely to see uh, too much of an improvement in the demand hmm. picture. So, given that, I think, yes, uh, it, it clearly seems to indicate since Ultratech is such a large player that uh, the entire cement space is going to feel this uh, pressure till I think the elections are out of the way. Okay, and Avinash, what's your view on Ultratech? No, I think Darshan, uh, numbers were definitely steady, you know, but uh, overall, if you look at the kind of uh, financing, what they have done for the Binani deal, I think uh, in the near term, you know, the debt on the balance sheet becomes extremely high. And I think uh, at least at least over the next one or two quarters, uh, we could find that possibly higher interest costs could possibly be a drag on profitability. And overall, the management commented in the con call that almost 17 to 18 million tons of incremental, you know, cement capacity is coming over the next 12 months. So, I think that could possibly also put a little bit pressure on prices. So, I think overall, it's better to wait. Uh, there's no doubt that Ultratech will do better in the longer term. But I would prefer to wait for at least a quarter or maybe a quarter and a two. 
because I think probably margins could be a little hit because of the Binani acquisition. Okay, so that's the view that's coming in on Ultratech. I think the consensus view is that uh, wait and watch in the short term, but a long term bet is something that you can take on Ultratech cement. And the final stock we want to talk about is M&M Financial. Uh, uh, came out with numbers which were uh, which were which were rather muted uh, uh, or mixed you can say while uh, the ni growth was not that strong uh, asset quality did manage to improve but the market's not liking the result the count is down almost 1.3 percent uh, uh, avinash m m financial what should one do 410 is it a good level to start accumulating yeah i think clearly uh, you know i think within the nbfc space this is one player which has shown a decent improvement in asset quality aum growth disbursement growth Although asset quality levels still remain quite elevated, I would believe that you know if an investor has a slightly medium term view, uh, he should wait for a small correction and then enter because clearly even at these levels you know the price to book appears uh, fairly uh, you know expensive and most importantly clearly with the kind of uh, incremental growth now for CVs taking a hit, I think that would be a key uh, factor to watch in the coming one or two quarters, especially the fourth quarter which is supposed to be a bumper quarter for CV sales. So uh, prefer to you know buy the stock at a lower level, uh, considering the fact that you know long. Long-term prospects, however, consider are quite good. Okay, so it's a long-term buy. Sharmila, M&M Financial, what have you advised your clients? So I think uh, the positives, obviously, are the fact that uh, numbers were hmm. okay, uh, mixed bag, as you said. Uh, secondly, I think you know they've dodged the uh, sort of the the bullet, uh, which a lot of NBFCs hmm. have had to face with uh, hmm. th that whole ILFS hmm. issue and you know that kind of, or they're not uh, uh, lending to real estate, etc. So they're uh, in in the safer side of the this. Uh, of, of the book, but uh, that its space itself is seeing correction as we are seeing from numbers of Maruti, etc. So that could be a concern. And I think, you know, when the entire sector is feeling the pain, you can't be the only one, you know, sort mm. of where the price is going up. So I think uh, there will be a correction, and uh, I completely agree with Avinash. I think that should be used as a time to get into the stock, but not at this price. Okay, and Rita, what have you all uh, told your clients about uh, MM Financial? So we have a buy rating on MM Financial, and uh, the overall uh, dis disbursements, AUM growth has been positive. Also, uh, the asset qualities, as you said, has improved uh, to some extent. The only thing is that how the auto uh, sales uh, emerges, hmm. because that will, uh, is the main uh, uh, main business. But to encounter that, the management is, you know, planning to, uh, you know, expand geographies. Hmm. So they are opening around 100 branches. So maybe even if uh, the growth is not there in the sector, but because of their uh, presence into newer sector, that will. Uh, that will uh, make the AUM growth go. But then uh, one side will be cost because NIMS are still under pressure. So uh, also the operating uh, expenses because of new branches, uh, them turning into positive break even. So that will, so near term, I think uh, some kind of uh, margin pressure will uh, be sustained. But overall, uh, it has gone into a, a positive trend and results are showing that we have a buy rating on my Okay, so that's the view that's coming in on m &M Financial. Overall, at least in the long term, uh, the view seems to be positive. Uh, the, the management of Tata Steel is speaking. But before that, I want to thank my guest, uh, Avinash, uh, Sharmila, and Rinda. Thank you so much for coming in. Uh, let's hear in what the management of Tata Steel is saying on uh, the sale that they've done as far as some of the Southeast assets, uh, Southeast Asia assets are concerned. Thank you so thanks. much. Thank you so much. Thanks, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who would like to ask questions, please press star, then one. question is from the line of Mubina Kapasi from ET Now. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Mr. Chatterjee, as well as uh, Mr. Narendran. Thanks so much for giving media participants the chance to, um, you know, ask these questions. So I know at the risk of uh, sounding repetitive, but just for the benefit of our uh, television audience, sir, I would like to just ask you once again that the new entity um, that will be having the 70 and 30 percent, um, you know, combo of basically HPIS and Tara Steel, um, firstly, uh, the rationale behind uh, Tara Steel maintaining its equity and interest uh, to the extent of 30 percent in the Southeast Asian assets and um, also what would be the overall enterprise value of the new entity? Sir? Yeah, so the uh, uh, logic of holding 30 percent was more because we found that that's the most optimal way to uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, get get the uh, you know get the return of the capital. Basically, HPI's group was keen for us to uh, stay on, and we felt that uh, we could optimize our footprint by uh, divesting 70% now and uh, waiting for a potential upside for the balance 30%. Uh, they are keen to build a partnership with us, 
uh, we bring the knowledge and the experience of having operated in the geography for the last 13, 14 years. Uh, they bring with them the uh, capital and the interest that uh, HBIS has to expand in the Southeast Asian geography. They have also announced another project in Philippines where they're building a steel plant. So in many ways, we thought that uh, uh, the right thing for us to do is to uh, uh, stay invested for 30% and then decide uh, after three years what to do with that. Or she yeah. can give you a bit more details on the transaction. Yeah. So uh, we would be um, uh, transferring about 100% uh, of our uh, natural assets and business uh, into a whole co and 67% uh, interest in Tata Steel Thailand, which is what we have. And uh, in that whole co, uh, HBIS will uh, take 70% of equity interest and we will be taking about 30%. The enterprise value uh, would be in the region of about $680 million, uh, including uh, debt of about $120 uh, to $150 million. And uh, the equity value for the transaction is about 535 for the whole business, and we would be taking about $327 million uh, uh, cash at the close of the transaction, which will be in the next couple of months after uh, there are certain condition precedents from HBIS side for investments. And uh, once that is all done, then we will close the transaction and form this partnership. Okay, I think 685 is a very impressive valuation. Um, so, you know, since you'll be having the 30% equity interest in um, in this entity, I think it's uh, pertinent to also ask you about uh, measures that could perhaps be taken by the entity to improve the EBITDA per ton. I mean, if I just purely look at it compared to Tata Steel's own performance in India, in, in Europe, or even in the newly acquired entities, um, I think on an EBITDA per ton basis, it's a bit disappointing. So, uh, with HBIS as well coming on board, um, you know, from a technological perspective, from a scale perspective, perhaps, could we be expecting some improvement in the performance of the Southeast Asian business? So I think, uh, firstly, to be fair to HBIS, they should be answering this uh, question. But uh, all I can say is, uh, you know, the Southeast Asian geography is an interesting and attractive geography. It's a different matter that the EBITDA for us in Southeast Asia is not comparable to what we deliver in India. Uh, hence, uh, our strategic interest is different. But if you look at it from a HBIS point of view, the Chinese market is maturing a bit, and Southeast Asia is a growth market, which is 80-90 uh, million ton market, uh, which is growing at 7-8%. Uh, so it's similar, slightly smaller than India, but growing at the same rate. Uh, so from that point of view, it's an attractive geography for them. Uh, for us, we, our home market itself is uh, growing, and if you have to invest capital, we'd rather invest in the home market. So, so that's where the uh, uh, benefit comes for them. They get a footprint into uh, a growing market with assets which have equity there. We have, a, we have good customer relationships in both Thailand and Singapore and the rest of Southeast Asia. So they immediately get an entry into that. Tata Steel and Southeast Asia also import steel from China to supplement what we produce there. So uh, there again, uh, HBIS can uh, uh, you know, uh, derive benefit from that synergy as well. So there are multiple reasons. The reasons why they would look at Southeast Asia is different. Uh, for us, it's a way of getting a partner who has greater aspirations for that region and can uh, bring in capital, can bring in uh, back-end supplies, and uh, can bring in a greater ambition into that region uh, because, like I said, they've also announced that they're building a steel plant in Philippines. So, uh, you know, they can have a much larger footprint in that uh, region than we would have ambitions to have because of our focus on India. Okay. And, and sir, so, um, your entire Southeast Asian interests now are within this, in this new holding company. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. All right. Um, so, any plans to, you know, uh, monetize this uh, this stake in the future? I mean, I know you have literally just uh, announced this transaction, but you, will you perhaps be looking uh, at an IPO or anything of that sort in, in the near future? That optionality is there. Uh, I think uh, at the right time we will look at it. But basically, what uh, uh, we are planning is at least for the next two, two to three years we will uh, stay invested here, and uh, uh, three years is what we have in mind. And then after that we will see uh, how it goes and take a call on uh, what is the best thing to do.